From the grocery store to the farmer's market to your refrigerator, what you're buying and what you're eating may not be what it seems. If it seems too good to be true, if the deal is just too good, you, that's a warning sign. Doug Karras with the FDA says there are two ways food fraud works. One, by cheating the weight of a product. Two, by substituting a lower quality item. The most well-known counterfeit products, olive oil, honey, and seafood. When a fish is filleted, it's very difficult to tell one fish from another. The National Seafood Inspection Laboratory determined 34% of all fish sold in the U.S. wasn't really the species we thought we were buying. Only 2% of all imported fish is inspected by the FDA. You don't know what's in there. You don't know what you're eating. David Shaw is a special agent for ICE, the Immigration's Customs Enforcement. He works on the front line, tracking down the food before it gets to you. This cheese was stopped at a warehouse in Miami. They would tell FDA, look, this container has bread. Well, the agents would open the container and the front would have bread, but the 40-foot container, the other 38 feet would be this cheese. And this cheese had staff, it had E. coli, it had everything you think of. The FDA inspects only 1% of the 10 million products shipped into the country annually. Agent Shaw says that's why food fraud is an easy and lucrative way for organized crime to make money. The penalties are not there yet. We have not seen anybody get more than nine months home confinement. In Operation Rotten Tomato, one of California's oldest growers, SK Foods, was investigated for selling moldy expired tomato derivatives to Kraft and Heinz, but selling it under the guise of being more expensive forms of paste. In other cases, pricey sheep's milk cheese was actually the product of cow's milk, and honey was diluted with corn syrup. All of these items marketed 100% pure and sold at a premium price. There's a near infinite number of fraudsters, and there's a near infinite number of types of fraud. Dr. John Spink helped to create the anti-counterfeiting and product protection program at Michigan State University. It's the first in the country to help develop anti-counterfeiting strategies. Spink fears if we don't get in control of it now, lives will be put in jeopardy. We've already seen what can happen when 3,600 pets die because of food fraud. Melamine was put in pet food because that product made it look like it had more protein in it. Melamine is 66% nitrogen and is used to make plastics. If something bad gets in the system, it can move and, and impact so many people so quickly. The Food Safety Modernization Act is potentially the most sweeping overhaul of the nation's food safety system in nearly 75 years. It ups the ante against criminals, directing $1.4 billion to inspect foreign food sources. Another way to protect ourselves is with DNA testing, which is able to discover the origins of meat and produce. Just as we know they can isolate DNA from a 40,000-year-old woolly mammoth, uh, uh, we can in fact isolate DNA from most of our food. Dr. Mark Stokel created a way for the DNA of food to be tested. We found that, uh, that a quarter of the uh, uh, items that she purchased uh, were mislabeled. Whether it's mislabeling to make more money or selling tainted products, food fraud impacts us all, and it's going to take all of us to beat it. I've never kicked down a door to uh, in a, of, a, of a counterfeiter. I've never handcuffed anybody. But what I do is I work with people that do. And those people are out there risking their lives every day, guns in their faces, trying to go track down these bad guys. And the bad food that could not only cost you more, but risk your life. I'm Vanessa Welch reporting.